We do um, 42. 42? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. That's an excellent question. Oh. Let's get started on that. Happy equivalence is when it's equal to pH. Yeah, when you think of the graph, the half equivalence point is the pH. Not half, no, it's in the buffer region. No, how, how is the buffer region? Half equivalence point is in the buffer region. That's equivalent, not half equivalent. That's equivalent? Uh huh. Uh, Why is it pH? Does it hinder? Oh, uh, it hinders the possible. Right, but we should do this step by step. So um, they didn't say what we're using here, but let's say that we're using formic acid and um, sodium hydroxide. So if we're using formic acid and sodium hydroxide, what would be the chemical reaction that occurs? Oh, I don't think we need to write down the formula. We can just say that it's formic acid. Okay. So, Sorry. oh, but they told us the formula at the top of the page, right? They said that the formic acid was HCOOH, and they said that its Ka is 1.77 times 10 to the negative 4. And now my question is, um, if we're titrating formic acid with sodium hydroxide, what is the chemical reaction that's going to happen? Um, what will be the starting materials in the products? You're going to start with formic acid and NaOH, and you're going to make uh, H2O. Not H2O. Yeah, H2O. Yeah. Yeah. And then NaCO. Okay, so this is the acid, which means it's going to give a proton. Who is it giving the proton to? To the OH. So in this case, you're right. We are making water. Now, after this loses the proton, it's going to look like this. It doesn't really matter if you can draw this exactly right, but it'll look like this. As this is the proton that it's losing. Um, and there's also going to be the sodium ion. You can write them together or separate, whatever you want. So this is the chemical reaction that's happening. We don't want to say that these are reacting with water, because they'd rather react with each other. Where should I put this number in the table? Um, Under the formula. And we're assuming we're starting with zero of this. If we do, don't we not need to do an ice table if we're going to do henderson hasselbach Well, we need this to see how to use henderson hasselbach So we'll see why that is. Um, what number should I plug in for the sodium hydroxide here if we are um, going to titrate to the half equivalence point? Oh, um, half, half. Which would point, be? Point 0.1. Yeah. But by half equivalence point, they mean that there is enough base to react with half of the acid. That's what half equivalence point means. Equivalence point is when there's enough base to react with all of the acid. So this would be point one. Okay, um, so now what should our changes be? Um, you're gonna okay. use up all that NaOH. Minus, so minus point one. And over here? And over here? Plus 0.1. Is this reaction going to equilibrium or to completion? It's going to completion. Because there's something strong. It doesn't matter that this is weak, there's one thing that's strong. So we don't need any excess. This is going to go to completion. So our final concentrations look like this. So that was the first step. Now we have the next step. Um, so now, what do we have left? We have the acid and the base, which is we have the buffer solution. So we can use the henderson hasselbach equation. But the fraction is going to cancel out. The P oh, and it's at, it's at the buffer, so pH is going to equal pKa. Right. So why did I say we need to the start change end? Because otherwise, we don't know that we're ending up with the same amount of acid and base. Oh. 
Although, actually, that, we should have known that because, by definition, that's what happens at the half equivalence point. But it's good to use the table to show that half equivalence point means the point where you have equal amounts of acid and base. How do we know the Ka, though? Oh, that was given at the top of the page. Oh, okay, so negative log of it. Right. Three point seven five. Okay. Thank you. Got it. Three point seven five. Yeah. And that's the right answer. Uh huh. Okay, so this is actually identical to the problem we just did. Remember we just did a problem that I made up about sodium um, hydroxide reacting with potassium acetate to make a buffer? I didn't say so, but that was a titration that went to the half equivalence point, wasn't it? So it was this, we just did the same problem. Um, so we just did the same type of case. But again, it's good to make the start change end table because it would have been possible here that we, um, so we would still use the henderson hasselbach even if we're not at the half equivalence point. For example, suppose we only put in 0.08 of sodium hydroxide. If we'd only put in 0.08 of sodium hydroxide, this term wouldn't drop out, but we could still calculate it pretty easily using the start change end table, and then we could still figure out the pH. Okay. And if it's at the equivalence point instead of the half equivalence point? That's another case. It'd be 0.2. We're going to do that one right now. Yeah. We do 45. 45. 45? Mm -hmm. Yep, that would be great. So, which case did we just do in the handout here? Oh, we did half equivalence point. You have a weak acid, strong. Base and you have you oh, start sorry. with more of the acid than the base. Yeah, weak acid, strong base, less base than acid. Good. Um, so actually, uh, so it's a uh, before we. Uh, well, I think uh, okay. So that's that case in the handout. So notice that that puts you in the buffer solution region. 